Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Tech Matters. Today, we have with us Hadi Partavi, who is the founder of Code.org, and we'll be talking about how they've created a revolution with computer science in schools. Hadi, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for hosting me. Let's start with the beginning. Where did your passion for education begin in the first place? Well, my father was a professor. He was a physics professor, actually, when uh, when I was growing up in Iran. And uh, he was one of the first to start the, the, the university that's now known as Sharif University. So education has kind of always been in my blood, you could say, is <laughs> technology education. Uh, he you know, started teaching me various physics concepts and, and basic coding when I was young. And so education is the best way to, to spread opportunity and to help people make a better living and life for themselves. Uh, and it's one of the best ways to give. And so when it came to me deciding how I was going to give back, uh, when I was sort of, sort of transitioning my career in tech, education was the natural place I gravitated. What was the first introduction to a computer or to computer science in general? I have an unusual introduction to computer science. You know, for a lot of people, I think uh, the device they used is similar to mine. I, I started coding uh, on a Commodore 64 computer, and lots of people who were born at the same time as as I, uh, you know, entering their sort of early teens in the 1980s that got introduced via Commodore computers or the early Apple computers. What was unusual for me is I was living in Iran uh, during the Iran-Iraq war, and this was just a terrible place for, for a child. The neighborhood I was in was near the TV station, which was a bombing target by the Iraqi fighter jets. So for almost 2,000 nights in a row, our neighborhood was getting bombed uh, every night. Uh, it was just dangerous and scary. Uh, so uh, this, the, for me, the Commodore 64 really was an escape from a very harsh reality of the life. Uh, I was sort of living in the physical world. And I learned that you know, with a computer, if you can dream it, you can build it. And even though the coding at that time was in basic or in, or in machine language, and the things you could create were very, you know, nowhere near as, as beautiful and amazing and, and realistic as what today's computers can generate. Still, it, it, it showed me how you can combine the logic of computer science with the creativity of an artist to, to make interesting programs and things. Uh, I was also really into music. So the first really sort of, uh, the first computer program I wrote that I was really sort of proud of was a program that could basically play back music. So I could type the music notes from my from my music books into the computer, and then it would uh, effectively do the playing for me. We have uh, similar histories. I started uh, programming on a, a PC8088, uh, and it had one floppy drive. And I remember some of my first programs being music as well, using GW Basic. Uh, that's very interesting. What makes you describe computer science as a foundational skill? So. Uh, that's a wonderful question. You know, computer science in people's minds is bucketed sort of as a technology math science like thing. But what's interesting about computer science is it is simultaneously analytical and creative at the same time. At a time when every industry is being impacted by digital technology, you can't name a single industry where there isn't an impact from zoology to archaeology, agriculture, transportation, commerce, uh, construction, manufacturing, all of these things are being changed because of digital uh, software and transformation. It's important for students to understand how that stuff works. For the same reason that we teach students about photosynthesis or about uh, how electricity lights a light bulb, you couldn't find a high school student anywhere in the world that isn't learning about those things as part of their primary and secondary education. And you don't just teach those to the students who want to become electricians or botanists. You teach how plants work because it's part of understanding the world around us. And in today's day and age, understanding how technology works, how to create technology is critical for everybody, not just not just the ones who want to go into tech jobs. Uh, our future doctors should understand how technology and digital technology is transforming medicine. Future farmers, even today's farmers, need to figure out how to patch and manage their highly complicated tractor equipment but we're going to be entering a world where the tractors are self-driving and drones are monitoring the crops. Uh, every field is going to be increasingly digital. And the purpose of K-12 school 
uh, primary and secondary schools to introduce students to what's going to be in the world around them. And, and there's no way you can think of computer science as anything but foundational in this world. That's a great way to describe it. Not only is it both a combination of right brain, left brain in terms of its applicability, but also it's ubiquitous in its impact in every walk of life that everyone um, is in every single day. That's amazing. Code.org, um, this is not just about teaching coding. What, what else do you teach and why? So our name is Code.org and my hat says code. Uh, and uh, you know we, we love our logo, but our work is about computer science broadly. And our curriculum teaches coding, computational thinking or algorithm design, a uh, little bit of data analysis and data science, machine learning, which is incredibly important, physical computing and robotics, cybersecurity. These are all aspects of computer science. And uh, what's important is, you know, when I learned computer programming in school and university, the focus was programming. Many of these other things weren't a thing yet, you know, machine learning or cybersecurity. They were too sort of young as, as fields to be included in a standard computer science education. When we think about uh, students in K through 12 schools, we don't want to just teach them programming. We want to give them a survey of all the aspects uh, of how digital software is impacting the world. So for example, just knowing how not to get hacked or understanding how training data can create a biased machine learning algorithm and the importance of, of working against uh, that when, when using machine learning. These are aspects that I think may or may not produce people as young coders, but it'll help produce well-prepared uh, students for engaging in civic society. That's a great way to think of it. Like you said, computing might have started off with most of the focus on coding, but computing is so much more. To the point you made previously in terms of how pervasive it's in its use, uh, everyone needs to be exposed to the fact that it's not just about coding, it's much more. And as you mentioned, there's everything from just awareness on the one hand to expertise on the other hand. And even the minimal familiarity makes it much easier for people to do what they do every single day. That's a great way to think of it. You state that we are not trying to prepare kids for jobs. We are trying to prepare kids for life. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about that statement? Yep. Um, you know, if you want to prepare students for jobs, you'd look at what are the very specific skills needed right now and then teach those. The challenge with technology is that it's constantly evolving. Uh, and, you know, our courses start students as early as kindergarten. You know, a student who's starting kindergarten today, by the time they graduate college, it's going to be in 17 years. None of us can predict what skills specifically are going to be needed in 17 years. Will we be using Python then? You know, who knows? What computer language is not relevant? What's important to teach is things like functional abstraction or user interface design or how machine learning can impact society. The concepts are, are going to be relevant regardless of whether they're uh, taking a job in computing or not. Uh, and also to get them excited and passionate about it. You know, if you think about what you learned when you studied biology in high school, it didn't prepare you for a job as a surgeon or as a nurse, you know? I, and in fact, I guarantee you, nobody would want their surgeon or nurse being somebody who, who just came from a ninth grade biology class. What your biology class did is it helped introduce you to that world and then if you have a passion for it, you, you go into it in, in university. That's the purpose of K through 12 education. And so our goal is to give the same similar broad introduction to computer science to every child, the foundational stuff that everybody should understand as just part of society. And then also to, to spark that passion for creativity for the students who want to then go further into it when they go into university. What is one of the biggest surprises you've learned in running Code.org on top of uh, some of those things that you already mentioned in the journey Code.org has had? By far, our biggest surprise has been the passion, the willingness, really the love that we've received from teachers and educators, especially in public schools. And I mention this because when I started Code.org, a number of people told me, one of my former bosses told me, don't even bother trying to change public school. 
Like it just, it's not going to work. You're just wasting your time right now. Every month, 50,000 teachers join code.org. And it's not because the government is telling them they need to teach computer science. In most cases, the school doesn't have computer science in its curriculum. And the teacher individually is saying, I know my students are going to benefit from this. I'm going to go out of my way and teach it to them. And so the, the reception we've had from teachers has been incredible, especially at a time when basically the, the cynical voices were telling us don't expect education to change. The, the U.S. education and even globally, the world's education system is turning on a dime much, much faster than you would expect government run public education could. Hari, this has been an amazing conversation. First, I want to thank you for building a organization like Core.org and the difference that you made in the community. You changed the landscape of computing and the diversity in computing for the long term, and you continue to make a difference across the world. Thank you for being with us on the show today, and we look forward to collaborating, par partnering with you going forward. Thank you so much. And I just want to say the work that we've done wouldn't have been possible without the incredible outpouring of support, both from the teachers. There's been millions of teachers whose work really is what's happening in classrooms. They're the ones making the real change happen, but also so many folks from within the tech industry and every industry who've supported us in some way. Uh, it, our work wouldn't have been possible without all the advocates, donors, volunteers who have helped make code.org as, as successful as it has been. So thank you so much. And thank you for hosting me.